Drummers, what's going on? This is Brandon from Drum Mechanics. I got a business called Strata Internal Performance, and I'm a biomechanics specialist by trade, and I work with people just like you every day, helping to identify where there are problems in their body, and I use exercise, resistance training, and some other really cool modes to make changes so you can do what you love to do for life. Today, we're going to go over five misconceptions, myths, things that are 100% not true about assessing your drum throne height. I will tell you, today I'm not going to tell you how to assess your drum throne height, but please check out some of my previous videos. I have tons of tutorials on how to assess active range of motion to determine your specific drum throne height. But truthfully, drum set ergonomics has become a popular conversation and everyone's sticking their toe in it and it's a bit nitty gritty from a biomechanics perspective. So I have five things that we're gonna go over. Let's check it out. Drum throne myths. Okay, let's get into it. Myth number one, adjusting your drum throne height is as simple as raising up the top of the throne to the top of your knee. I've seen a few different drum teachers suggest this, and I'm going to throw this out there to you. The bones of the lower leg, the tibia and the femur, and really any other bone, we all have slightly different length femurs and tibias and really every single bone. Although all of our skeletons, like the guy behind me, right behind me, we all have the same amount of bone, bones, mostly, not entirely true, but most of us have femurs and tibias. Each of these bones are slightly different proportions. So the reason why I bring that up is truthfully, one of the guys that works with me here has extremely short tibias and a long femur. That means his drum throne would be really, really low based off the rest of his body. It wouldn't work for him. So myth number one, adjusting the drum throne to the top of your knee. Don't do it. Please don't do it. Blanket statement like that. Just don't work. Myth number two, another simple one, same vein as the previous one, but to adjust your drum throne height it is as simple as sitting down and adjusting the drum throne so you're sitting at 90-90. Your knee is at a 90 degree angle and your hip to your torso is at a 90 degree angle. This again does not work. First, the point that I just regarded a second ago applies here as well. We all have different length bones, but let's put that aside. If we know that our bones are shaped differently, we also have different contractile availability lengths in our skeletal muscle. The reason why I say this is if you watch some of the previous drum throne videos that I've done, I talk about assessing your active range of motion. Right, range of motion is how far your body can go on any given day based off of your joint structure and how far your passive tissues, your ligaments, will let you go. But your skeletal muscle, your force producers, will have a predetermined amount of voluntary motion that they can go through based off the specific torque setting that you're sitting in. When you're sitting down, you can only raise your legs so high while you're laying on your back because eventually your thigh kind of goes over your hip joint, that joint axis changes, you can actually lift your leg higher. So when you're sitting down, we need to make sure we're adjusting our drum throne height based off of our active range of motion. Here's why this is a myth. 90-90 means that there's a predetermined amount of joint motion, 90 degrees at the knee and 90 degrees at the hip. Most of us, if we haven't had a knee replacement or have knee osteoarthritis, we got 90 degrees at the knee, always exceptions to the rule. But the hip, I will tell you, I have seen a ton of people, even high level professional athletes who don't have great control at 90 degrees of hip flexion. And even that 90 degree that you're talking about has to be at a specific position of abduction because we have a 14 inch snare drum between our legs. So myth number two, 90-90, eh, no go. Myth number three, flat top drum throne versus motorcycle style seats. The motorcycle seat is better, I have heard. This is not true. We're gonna be doing a very comprehensive biomechanical breakdown of the mechanics of the difference between a flat top and a motorcycle seat, but here is the Coles notes of that. A flat top will allow you when you're sitting to have your tissue sit in a more natural position. You'll be able to adjust a little bit easier based off of this flat piece here. A motorcycle seat has a predetermined width or narrowness that may accommodate to your anatomy or not. For some of you, it might actually be perfect, but for some of you, it might not be. A very simple analogy is if I gave all of you the exact same orthotic, and if you don't know what an orthotic is, it's a support that goes into the bottom of your shoe that's awfully pre often prescribed by a chiropodist or a chiropractor or someone else that works with feet. It helps to provide support into your foot. If I handed out a hundred of them to a hundred of you, some of you would be like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever felt. It fits, feels perfect in my foot, and for many of you, it would not fit. 
motorcycle style seats. First and foremost, there's a few mechanical things that just don't work when it comes to weight distribution and the physics, but more importantly, it just doesn't work for all of you. If you're looking for a safe bet, flat wide top, and truthfully, the DW9000, let's just turn that branding away. The DW9000 is wider and flatter and much more firm. More on that in a second. And it's by far one of my favorite drum thrones because it lets your body just sit more naturally. And truthfully, if you're buying any of the drum thrones that have slits in the middle to help your back, they might help some of you. But same thing, a one-size-all-fits approach just does not work, especially when you're looking at it from an analgesic pain perspective. Number four, softer drum thrones with extra foam is better than firm. So hear me out on this. If I take this regular piece of foam and I push down on it with my finger with a little bit of weight and I push down this drum throne, you can see that this drum throne does have some deformation you can see on the camera. You can also see this foam has way more deformation when I put pressure on it. Soft, squishy things like mattresses and soft shoes and blankets, they do feel really, really great. But here's the reason why this is 100% not better. Two reasons. One, it depends on your weight and that'll determine how much material deformation that happens. So the reason why I say this is if I push on this with 10 pounds and push on this with 10 pounds, the amount of deformation that happens in this foam versus this foam is very different. Now, for some of you, some of you might weigh 140 pounds and some of you might weigh more than 200 pounds. The weight doesn't matter. But what does matter is you need to make sure you're getting an adequate amount of support underneath your derriere, if you will, to make sure you get everything you need to have a healthy posture and back. Extremely soft foam, if it is too soft and can't support the amount of mass on top of it, might change shape and might not be changing shape in a way that we like. It also, if you have asymmetrical anatomy or already potentially a postural deficit like a scoliosis, if I put my two glutes down on it, I'm going to get way more deformation on one side, which means that I'm actually going to have a bit more leaning to my left side versus the right, which accidentally reinforces poor posture. Now, I said there were two reasons, and the second reason is far more important. Squishy foam like this, like memory foam, really does a great job. But if you hear the name in like memory foam, they call it memory foam because as you sit on it long enough, it changes shape over time to contour to your body more. I have a memory foam mattress. I actually love it. But some of the memory foams in different chairs and soft thrones and different uh, foam quality, if you will, will actually start to permanently change shape. And over time, that permanent shape actually starts to create more rigid, hard, almost concrete surfaces. Not concrete, but we're getting closer to a more dense material. And you know this. If you've ever sat on a chair that is very, very old, you feel it's crunchy and hard in spots. Now, if we start having memory foam that starts to deform more and more and more, and we get that asymmetrical wear on the one side, we start leaning more over to one side over the other. Now we have a gigantic problem where the memory foam that was super comfortable is now accidentally creating more postural deficits in the vein of the first point of this. So myth number four, soft thrones are better. No, firm is far safer far safer long-term than soft. Although soft does feel good. Point number five, shock absorbers in your drum throne. I've had a lot of students actually ask me about this. Should I get one of the drum thrones with shock absorption in the bottom? I really want to make sure that I'm absorbing forces in my back and creating the most healthy environment possible. I'd like to illustrate a scenario. When you perform a bass drum stroke down and you push into the pedal, if you're performing anything that requires lifting your leg, so I suppose a heel up scenario, you have to lift up your leg and you have to apply force into the pedal, obviously. But what creates force into that pedal is the reaction force of the weight of your leg pushing into the pedal, the pedal hitting a cam, and then hitting a bass drum to create a percussive sound and you can lift your leg up. When you hit that bass drum pedal, say you hit it with 10 pounds of force, Whatever hits the bass drum, there's a point of it that comes back through the pedal, an amount, it might be 10 pounds or less, probably less if you have good technique, and it'll come up into your leg a little bit. Now, this is a very normal amount of force, and you would think, hey, if I had all that force go down through my bum into a shock absorber, that'd be great, so that way my back wouldn't be taking the force. But the problem is, as you get going, the bouncing starts to become a little bit more of a pronounced thing. The force absorption 
helps to some component, but in another component, much like riding a full suspension mountain bike, you actually have a seat that starts to absorb some of the kinetic energy that you're producing, which means that the force that you're putting into the drum set, into the bass drum, into moving around, is actually not as efficient as it possibly could be. If I'm sitting on my drum throne and I'm playing a tom roll, a descending roll down the toms, as I start to get to the the 14 and 16 inch tom, if you're kind of playing this way, there's a component of me shoving down into the throne that I need to have be rigid support. Like I almost have a seat belt so I can make it around there and come back, especially at higher tempos or higher velocity. If I have this thing absorbing force, I actually might have the throne moving away from me, moving down and bouncing and shifting as I start to go away. There's a component of a shock absorber that could be really beneficial and, again, very comfortable in the vein of the memory foam, but it does create an inherent amount of risk. Truthfully, the amount of force that we're producing when we're playing the drums shouldn't be an amount that is coming into our back and creating an amount of problems, especially if you're in an ergonomically safe position. The only time I can truthfully think of a drum throne of a shock absorber being beneficial is if you're watching one of these crazy rockers who stands up, hits the crashes, and bounces back down onto it. Sure, that would be really helpful if you were smashing down into that. But then again, you are losing potential kinetic energy to perform some of these greater strokes where you would need to have your feet and glutes properly anchored into the ground. You need that rigid base of support. And truthfully, if you're looking for a better example of this, if you have ever tried to practice a golf swing or a hockey stroke or anything like that, and you're practicing indoors with your rubber shoes on the ground and you go sock foot on a hard surface and you start sliding a little, it's the exact same thing. You lose force production and kinetic energy because of an improper amount of friction and or inappropriate base of support. Anyway, these are five drum throne misconceptions myths that I've been seeing over YouTube and I've had a bunch of direct messages about and want to take a second to address them for you. If you're looking for more information on what kind of position you should be in with your drum throne, check out my previous videos on checking out what drum throne is right for you, how you should assess active range of motion, because truthfully, you can watch every drum throne video out there. Everyone is a self-proclaimed expert. But I promise you from my anatomy background, and I can even give you some proper resources if you'd like to learn a little bit more, if you follow your skeletal structure, you follow active range of motion, you'll learn more about neuromuscular adaptations like potentiation. Most of the soundbite things that you hear from other drummers with love and respect is not true. And I'd love to just continue to support you as much as I possibly can. So this is Brandon from Drum Mechanics. I want to give you all the tools that you need so you can play drums longer, stronger drummers, play longer. And who doesn't want to play longer? Anyway, if you like this, please leave a comment below. If you didn't like something about it, leave a comment below. Tag a friend if you think that'd be super helpful. Share this video and thanks so much. And please subscribe because truthfully, the more followers I get, the more stuff I'm going to do. I'll tell you a little secret. I'm getting really close to the amount of people who are on subscribe to this channel or more than my Instagram page where I like to post some of my drum stuff. And as soon as that happens, I'm going to dive into way more content for you guys. And I got a secret project that I'm working on that I'm very excited about. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought of this and I'll see you in the next one.